has the worst. Hi, and welcome to another edition of The Best Pictures. I'm one of your hosts, Joey Powers. And I'm Don Trattler. Welcome to the show. Um, we're going to do a, like a little mini episode today, about half an hour. Um, we're going to review, do a recap of the Oscars. Yeah, because the Oscars were, what, two nights ago, so yep. now we get to kind of talk about it. Yep. Um, I guess right off the bat, I'm kind of embarrassed, right? I didn't see as many of the nominees this year as I, like last year, I think I saw most of the nominees. And this year, I only saw, I think I only saw Shape of Water. Did you, you saw Get Out. And Get Out. Yeah, yeah. That, get, get Out's the only one I've seen. I'm getting uh, three billboards tomorrow. Um, but that, that's the other thing, too, is, like, BF didn't get three billboards outside. They did get The Shape of Water, which enabled they did. you to go see it. And right after that, I te- right after I saw it, I texted Joey and I said, it was really good, but it wasn't best picture material. And lo and behold, that was pretty much, I, I, would, I would say based on what all the predictions I saw, that looked like, of, of the big winners anyway, that was the only upset. Because I think most people expected it to be the three billboards outside of Ebbing, Missouri. Because it had taken home the Screen Actors Guild for uh, Ensemble. And it had taken home the Golden Globe for Best Drama. Um, but, uh, uh... Now, what were the other nominees? The, pr- the Producers Guild went to um, The Shape of Water. So I feel like that was the one, I think, that of all the major categories, that was definitely the most highly contested. Um, yeah, I was actually getting to that. Because, um, well, what my thinking was on it was, you know, it was a good movie. It was visually uh, visually appealing, but it had kind of a formula to it. It kind of had, it was... The Shape of Water? Yeah, it was kind of like, you know, you've seen that story before. Right. It wasn't new. I remember you telling me that. I think you actually told me before the show, too, but yeah, I remember yeah. you telling me that before. I'm trying to think, what was last year? What, oh, Moonlight. Moonlight. Now, Moonlight was off. Moonlight was not something we'd seen before. No, I actually, after the Oscars, I went and got Moonlight on Netflix, and I really liked it. Um, but the sh- another thing, too, is um, I don't go to the theater movies a lot, because I don't, I don't really like going to the movies by myself. And none of these are really out on DVD yet. Like, The Shape of Water comes out in two weeks. Right. That comes out today, actually. The three billboards came out today, but I'm not getting it till tomorrow. Um, the other ones... Darkest Hour, that did play in BF. That did, and I missed it. Yeah, now I wish too. I'd have seen it. Um, I wish I'd have pushed it. Dunkirk myself. has been out for a while, actually. Yeah. I have not seen that. Phantom Thread is one both of you and I both want to see. I don't think BF's going to get that, though. Right. Um, then there's Get Out, The Post, Spielberg. and So uh, get, get Out was nominated for Best Picture? Yeah. It won Best Original Screenplay. Wow. Um, I actually, on Friday, was reading Yahoo's predictions, and... They picked Get Out to win Best Picture because Holy they thought Moses. they thought The Shape of Water and Three bo- Billboards were not like the same type per se, but the same like they're going to attract the same Academy voters and that they were going to cancel each other out. And they thought that Get Out was going to sneak in and take it. Um, and we had the conversation when I saw it because remember we we saw that it was like the number one movie on like Rotten Tomatoes or something. And I was like, really? And so I got it and. I was trying to describe it to Alex because Alex thought Get Out should have won Best Picture. And I guess my main thing is after hearing the reviews and seeing how good of a rating it got, I was expecting an absolute knockout dynamite film, one of the best films I've ever seen. Right. And so my, my expectations were, were just set so high that they were impossible to meet. So, I mean, it probably is better because I did watch it a second time. Um, it is probably better than – I think I'm just being too critical of it, I guess I would say. I don't know. I really didn't. I didn't think that highly of it. I didn't. I wouldn't have nominated it as one of the best pictures. But now I'm trying to think. In saying that, I probably should have a replacement. I probably should have an idea of a movie that I thought was better this year. Um, so I really got to think about what I've seen that I thought was really mind blowing. So call call me by your name and Lady Bird were the other two nominees for best picture. I heard a lot of good things about Lady Bird. Yeah. I think that's the one you were telling me about. I think it's, yeah, it's directed by Greta Gerwig. Yeah, and it's the one that you were telling me about with um, the girl from Roseanne, Laurie Metcalf. Right. I remember you telling me that a while ago. That was like one of the best rated movies. And that was kind of cool. Laurie Metcalf got nominated for uh, Best Supporting Actress, which was, when I saw that, I was like, wow, this is, that's pretty cool. She finally gets her from Roseanne. Yeah, because she was in, oh shoot, was it the movie that, I think she was it. Was she in Loverboy, the movie you lent me? She may have been. No, no, it was, it was oh, another curse. movie you lent me. 
Uh, Uncle Buck. She was oh, the yeah, she's the neighbor. Across the, she's across the neighbor. The street. Yeah, she's also in Scream 2. She's one of the killers in Scream 2. She Sorry, was really good. I ruined that for anybody. It's sure it's terrible. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, there, yeah, put it on Dawn, moron. So what were the, go, go down the list. What were the other ones that got nominated? You said. Uh, it was The Shape of Water, Darkest Hour, Dunkirk, Phantom Thread, Three Billboards, Get Out, The Post, Call Me By Your Name, and Lady Bird. Oh, sounds like a good mix. Call Me By Your Name? I hadn't really heard of it until it was nominated for Best Picture. It's, uh, who's in it? Is it Peter Sarsgaard? Um, all the other ones I've heard of, yeah. except for this one. Who was in this? This got a 8.1 on IMDb, 96% on Rotten Tomatoes. Actually, wow. let's see what they all got. We'll just go through so the list. High school, high school kid that falls in love with a college student? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's like a 17-year-old? Yeah, I don't right. know. So The Shape of Water. I read the review. I probably put it on my list to see, but... So Shape of Water got 7.6 in the 92%. So Call Me By Your Name got a better review than Shape of Water. Huh. Um, let's see, Darkest Hour. Come on. I'm going to get yelled at for staring at this again. Yeah. 86% on Rotten Tomatoes, 7.4 on IMDb. So, I mean, they're all getting pretty good reviews. So, okay, let's see what Get Out got. I'm kind of curious because I feel like Rotten Tomatoes had at like 100. IMDb, 7.7 .7 Rotten Tomatoes, 99%. Wow. So that's where I, I remember seeing that, and that's where I got the whole, okay, this movie's got to be a knockout. If it's 99% on Rotten Tomatoes, it's got to be like a killer movie. Um, all right, we got a few here. But, but what, what about Best Actor? Because I feel like all the acting awards, um, they were all over with. Like there was... There weren't going to be any surprises, I feel. I feel, like I said, the only one, the only big one of the, of the major, major categories that was really contested was picture. Right. Because all the actors and actresses had won everything. They, had, they swept all the awards. So. so did Gary Oldman sweep all the awards for actor? Yeah. Did he ever win before? Did he ever win Best Supporting Actor? I don't think he ever has even been nominated. I could check. Oh, he must have been. He must have been. I mean, Gary Oldman, he was like an, that's like an overdue. Eight out of ten for Dunkirk, 93%. You want me to look and see if he was nominated? Sure. I, I think, you know, Gary Oldman. What would he have been nominated for? Uh, what would he be? Because I don't think he was in JFK enough to really be a supporting actor, especially with all the heavy hitters in that movie. Well, I remember him first. He played... Um, he was great as Lee Harvey Oswald. I'm trying to think within the movie. Sid and Nancy. He played Sid Vicious, which is the first time. It might have been like his first movie. Well, one of his first movies, but that's when Oh, what about to... Tinker Taylor, Soldier Spy? Would he have been nominated for that, maybe? Maybe. I mean, Gary Oldman's always good. What about the Batman movies? I don't think he was nominated for any of them. For, uh... Come on. What's his name? Captain Gordon? Commissioner Gordon. Yeah, no. I don't think so, because... I've always regarded... I always thought he was one of the better actors, Gary Oldman. He is a good actor. This isn't agreeing with me, so I guess we'll never know. Huh. Where are we? All right, here we go. Let's try this again. Um, so I'm not surprised that he won. I really wanted to see him. You know, plus he's, uh, you know, playing a historical figure too. So that always makes sense. Well, and the difference. transformation, I mean, it doesn't look anything like Gary Oldman. Nothing. Like when I walked by and saw the poster that they had by the Opera House, I was like, that's Gary Oldman? I was like, oh my God, that looks nothing like him. He, he has won one Oscar. In his competition, he had Daniel Day-Lewis, who's already won three times. Yeah. So is Daniel Day-Lewis going to be, A, is he going to be better? Yeah, he was nominated for actor in a leading role for Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. Oh. So this was his second nomination. Okay. That's um, all. Yeah. I'm surprised by that. I, I remember his name being brought up for Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. Um, yeah, I don't know. I guess maybe he could have been nominated for... For JFK. Yeah. Because he was, he, I, I guess he might have been in it enough. It's just hard because there are so many supporting players in that movie. You know, Kevin Bacon was great. Joe Pesci, Tommy Lee Jones. Right. You know, you could just go down the list. There's so many. I mean, Michael Rooker even was really good in that movie. J.L. Sanders. You know, the only real lead in that movie is Kevin Costner. Everybody else is pretty much a supporting player. Yeah. So who else was nominated for, uh, for, uh, Best actor. We said Daniel. Uh, Daniel I don't Daniel know how to was. pronounce his last name. 
the guy from Get Out. He was nominated for actor. Oh, yeah. Um, like, who? Cool, all right, here we go. Uh, Daniel Kaluuya, Denzel Washington for Roman J. Israel, Esquire. Which got a really bad... I don't even my, know what... My the, impression was it got really bad reviews, that movie. And Timothy Chalamet, Call Me By Your Name. I think he's the high school kid. So those are your actor nominees. Wow, so it doesn't sound like a very strong uh, field there. I mean, outside of Daniel Day-Lewis and Gary well, Oldman. Daniel, Daniel, whatever, this is the first thing I've ever seen him in. I don't right. know. How, uh, Kalua, Kaluuya? I don't even know how to pronounce it. I don't it. know. Um, all right. So then actress we have, I think Meryl Streep was nominated. I think she gets nominated she every single year. Well, because she's so good. So she, she, just like Daniel Day-Lewis, they're worthy of a nomination for any, almost any performance. I was really glad that um, Frances McDormand, even though I haven't seen it, I'm glad she won Best Actress. Yeah. You know, because Fargo, she won for Fargo in 96, and she was outstanding in Fargo. And she's, I mean, I just recently watched Mississippi Burning again. And, <clears throat> I mean, we're talking 32 years ago now. Right. Um, but she's just, she's a great actress. She's really good in everything. Um, and she looked, I mean, I've seen, I haven't seen the movie, but I've seen the trailers for Three Billboards, and it just makes me want to see it. It looks like it's a tremendous well, performance. like I was going to say, I'm going to probably watch it tomorrow. So if you're around Thursday or Friday and you want to stop by the cafe or stop by my place, you can, you can watch it. Cool. Because I really, I'm going to watch it as soon as it comes in the mail. Um, but yeah, oh, okay, well, how was Sally Hawkins, or Sally Hawkins in The Shape of Water? Really good. Yeah? Because she was nominated. Yeah. Uh, Meryl Streep for The Post. Margot Robbie for I, Tanya. She's played Tanya Harden. I guess that's kind of like a satire movie. Like, I don't know. It's gotten really good, um, Allison, good reviews. Well, we'll talk about Alice and Janie in a minute. And uh, Suarez Ronan for Lady Bird. Oh, right. Yeah. She was nominated for Actress. I feel like she's been nominated before as well. I think she was in um, uh, Atonement. I think she might have been nominated younger for Atonement with uh, that could be. James McAvee and Keira Knightley. Um, I'm pretty sure she was nominated for something. Then supporting actor, Sam Rockwell, also won for three billboards outside of Ebbing, Missouri. Which is cool, because I kind of like Sam Rockwell. I, I kind of thought he fell off the radar here for a while. He did, I think. But I, I'm glad that he won as well. I still wish Woody Harrelson won, though. Talk about overdue. You know, I don't know how many times Woody's been nominated. I know he was nominated for um, People vs. Larry Flint. He was nominated for lead actor for that. He was nominated for supporting actor for The Messenger, and he was not. So he's been nominated at least three times. Um, What's The Messenger? Did I miss this? Uh, ben Foster, Woody Harrelson. I think they're in the Marines. I haven't seen it. I just know that he was nominated for it. Oh wow! Um, they're in some sort of. I think he was like. I, I I may not be correct, but I think he's the one that delivers the messages whenever someone dies to the family. I want to say that's what it's about, but don't hold me to it because I haven't seen it. But um, so yeah, Sam Rockwell won, then Woody Harrelson was also nominated for three billboards. Christopher Plummer, which I don't know how good he really was, or if the Academy was flat out just taking a shot at Kevin Spacey. It could have been either way. Um, this is also a movie I really would like to see, All the Money in the World. Right. Um, William, William Dafoe for The Florida Project. Oh yeah, I've heard only good things I've about heard that. great and things Dafoe. about this movie in that the movie kind of got the shaft and... He's the only one that got nominated out of all of it. Um, and then Richard Jenkins for The Shape of Water. Oh, and he's I think really Richard good. Jenkins is good in a lot of things. Did he win? Wait a minute. Did he win last year? Richard Jenkins? No. He was nominated for, um, was it The Visitor? He was nominated for oh, lead Lord. actor the year Sean Penn won for um, Milk. So like 2010, I want to say. Um, or 2009. Oh, maybe I'm wrong. I thought he had won, he had won Best Supporting Actor for something. No, that was actually his first Oscar nomination was that one that year. I think it was called The Visitor. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's real good, too. He, really and he was good. real good in that movie. Mm -hmm. And then supporting actress. I was very happy with this. Um, one of my favorite shows of all time was The West Wing. And Allison Janney was one of the stars. She played C.J. Craig, the press reporter. Um, so I don't know if you ever saw The West Wing or not, but there's not really one. They're all the star. Like, every character has the same amount of airtime and stuff. It's really, really oh, good. Oh, that's cool. It was written by Aaron Sorkin, who won a uh, screenplay for The Social Network. Oh. Um, and he also, Aaron Sorkin also wrote The American President. 
Um, and it's a lot of the same players. Like Martin Sheen is the chief of staff and the American president. He, he plays President Bartlett in the West Wing. It's got like Rob Lowe. You'd recognize a lot of people. There's a sure. lot of famous people. But so I was glad to see that she won for I, Tanya. Um, Leslie Manville, I don't know who she is, but she was in, she's the one that I think Daniel Day-Lewis falls in love with in Phantom Thread. Um, and I've heard good things about her. Lori Metcalf, as we spoke about before, for Lady Bird. Yeah, good for her for just getting a nomination. That's great. Mary J. Blige. That kind of surprised me. I don't even know what Mudbound is. Oh, I've heard good things about Mudbound, yeah. too. Yeah. And then um, Octavia Spencer for The Shape of Water. I think she's pretty good. I've seen her in a few things. I think she's a talented actress. Yeah, she's always real good. She was in last year's uh, Hidden Figures. She played a major okay. role in that. Yep. Though that was kind of like an ensemble. They had three women, so I don't know if she got nominated. I She's feel like been she... in a couple of big movies lately. She's yeah. really kind of coming into her own, which is great. So we got adapted screenplay. And when I was looking at this, two things surprised me. One, Logan was nominated for Best Adapted Screenplay. That yeah, really they, surprised me. They said that's kind of like that genre doesn't normally get nominated. No. And the yeah, other I'm one... I'm sorry I missed that when it was at the theaters. I really got to see it. The winner... Was Call Me By Your Name. And when I saw that, James Ivory, you know, he's always had, and he's 89. I think he's, they said he was the oldest Oscar winner. Wow. 89. Um, he's always been kind of critically acclaimed for different things. Um, but I thought about it, and I was like, of all, all the movies that could be nominated for original screen, or for adapted screenplay, and that's the one that won. But then I looked at the, looked at the other ones that were nominated. Mudbound, the Disaster Artist, Molly's Game, and Logan. So, and then if you look at original screenplay, where I don't even know where it is, you would think it would be right next to adapted screenplay. That would just make sense. I'm a little, bit, I'm a little surprised. I think uh, there was a lot of good word on the disaster artist, but I think because of James Franco's kind of falling out, uh, that probably affected the movie. It doesn't have adapted or original screenplay on here. Well, anyway, Jordan Peele won for Get Out. Which surprised me. <clears throat> when you look at it, beat um, it beat The Shape of Water. It beat um, three billboards. Right. It beat Lady Bird. You know, I mean, it beat some heavy hitters and Get Out beat all of them. For actually, I'm not even sh see. I wish it had it. I don't. I'm not even 100 percent sure if three billboards was nominated. Um. But director went to Guillermo del Toro, which wasn't a surprise at all. No, he's been pretty much building up to that. Uh, yeah. Original screenplay, Get Out, but it's not telling me who the nominee is. I'd have to go back and look. I'm trying to think of what, what he's done. He, pan, he did Pan's Labyrinth. Uh, oh, I, I just he, looked at it. Yeah, Pan's Labyrinth, I think, was the biggest one that I could think of. He, he's written bigger movies than he's really directed. Um, I think he did a movie, Kronos, was a Mexican film. Okay. I think what else I've watched from Guillermo del Toro. There's probably something I'm missing, but, you know. It was a good, I mean, it was a good movie, like I say, but I, I just didn't think. Let me find the original screenplay nominees, and then I'll, I'll look him up on IMDb. Maybe I'm just, let me, I think I'm out of touch. Maybe I'm, I'm out of touch, because last year, Moonlight won. I didn't see that coming. I don't uh, think anybody did. Everyone expected uh, La La Land to walk away with it. And I saw them both. I don't know if I, I don't know if I liked La La Land. I didn't see either one of them that much. I'm really kind of surprised. Maybe I just like different. Films. I liked. And the year before was The Revenant, right? Yes, I haven't seen that. Yeah, I don't know. I think that's going to be one. Maybe the buildup is going to be so high for that that by the time you see it, maybe you, you may not be as thrilled with it. All right, so is this, this is, these are the five nominees. The Shape of Water, Three Billboards Outside was nominated. Get Out, The Big Sick, and Lady Bird. I wouldn't have guessed Get Out would win. I would have, because generally one of the, the best picture winners is generally synonymous with um, screenplay. That's just kind of how it always seems to go. If you look back... More times than not, you're going to see director, screenplay, and picture probably most of the time fall in the same category. Um, director hasn't lately, but it did this year. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm glad Get Out won original screenplay because it's, 
I don't know who I was talking to about, but it, it almost seemed like they were trying to just make everybody happy. Just kind of spread the love. Be like, okay, well, you guys can have this. You guys get this. You guys get this. And whatever's left plus best picture goes to the shape of water. <laughs> you know? She was nominated for 13 Oscars. You, you knew they weren't going to give them 13 Oscars. So you knew right off the bat, neither of the three acting Oscars that they were not nominated for, none of them were going to win. Right. Those were all like foregone conclusions. Um, those are really, truly the people that are like, okay, I'm just happy to be nominated because I know I'm not going to win. You know, and that's nothing against their performances. I'm sure their performances were great, but I mean, it just seemed so overwhelming, all the acting performances. Right. They just, it seemed like they were so dominating. Do I get to join the conversation? Sure, we're almost <laughs> out of time. Uh, okay. So, what do you, uh, what do you have to say? Did you watch the Oscars? How many, how many of the nominated films have you seen? Uh, how many of the nominated films I saw? I've seen Get Out. Get Out. All right. I saw Did the, you see Shape of Water? I saw the, the first 15 minutes of The Shape of Water. Um, Three the, billboards outside Evans? The Evans's? story should have been okay in The Shape of Water. It just felt too like I'm going for my Oscar, um, and I'm going to be all artsy and a meal with this film. And um, so. Hey, it worked. When director oh, and yeah. picture. <laughs> he's done he's done plenty of other more innovating films than that. But yeah. that's fine. Everyone has a taste. I'm not gonna be I, I mean, I'm not glad I really want to see the real tragedy this year was Star Wars The Last Jedi, but that's another yeah. thing. So, <laughs> and then what else? Lady Bird, I haven't seen that. Lady Bird, get out, three billboards outside Ebbing's Missouri, Phantom Thread. I haven't seen the Phantom Thread. Um but I'm kind of like sick of uh, Daniel Day Lewis right now. It's always like every performance he does is like, give me my Oscar. I, I just, what about Meryl Streep? Just She's the same see, way. I just don't want to see that anymore. I want to maybe. Well, I, he's retiring. I would like to see Daniel Day Lewis in an action film, like in the vein of John Wick and um, Taken. What about that would uh? Be a really good. What action. about the Last of the Mohicans? That's, that's what I was gonna say. Well, well, yes, the Last, the Last of the Mohicans. Mohicans. Yeah. But he needs to start doing some action films. No more giving me this Oscar. I want to see some action films. Why? Why would why would that be good to see him as an action? He was great in Last of the Mohicans. Yeah. Yeah, he was. Seriously, he was able he to was. ham it up, but not too much. It still make you believe. All right, so we got The Shape of Water, Darkest Hour, Dunkirk, Phantom Thread, Three Billboards, Get Out, The Post, Call Me By Your Name, and Lady Bird, the nominees for Best yeah. Picture. I mean, Dunkirk was good, and that was it was a nice, good, ethereal type you know, storytelling. It was entertaining. I don't think it was his best film. Um, I can't imagine. With all the movies Christopher Nolan's done, yeah, I can't I imagine that's his best. best. I, I really did like Get Out, though. You didn't like it. You really, I, well, you well, like really I said, it. I, I just set the bar so what high. You? No, I didn't. I, I, we were I, both disappointed. It wasn't it as high 99% on, on it Rotten was, Tomatoes. Because by the time you see it, it's like the build-up to it was like, oh my god, this yeah, is the greatest movie, just, the best movie of the it year. It was already set up for failure by the two of us. I thought it was a really great thriller, and you really felt for the character, and you really wanted to take that journey, so that Checks the you know just being a good movie box right. or did it not do that for you? I just I could you not connect with the character? The way I look at it is domestically it made 180 million dollars. There's not that real oh my god I have to go see this because this person's in it. They didn't have anyone like that in it. Well, just on a basic level, and it's rated did you R. Connect though. with the main character and his journey. Or did you not care? Did it not connect with you? I knew where it was going. Like who cares what people say about the the art part of it? But what, that's the thing is that's what I was looking at it as. No, but who cares what's behind the message? Because you may not pick it up or not. Was it was it an entertaining story? No, it was disappointing. If you didn't know anything about it and you just watched it. I didn't know anything about it. All I knew, I, well, I, I mean, I knew the success it had. Were you able to connect with the character? Did you want to take that journey? Were there any surprises? Did it not surprise you? Not really. Okay. So, yeah, hey, I mean, for you guys, it wasn't really that great of a movie. I mean, there's other stuff behind it thematically and visually that represent different things and that's why it got all this critical pr press but yeah if you can't connect to a movie I mean yeah. it, just on a basic level is the story entertaining is it thrilling for you do you connect with the character do you you know I mean if, if that doesn't work then um, I, I mean I thought I was able to connect with it um, well obviously most people did I mean it got nominated for best picture one best original script I mean it'd be right. The Shape of Water, it beat Lady Bird, it beat um, Three Billboards Outside of Ebbing's Missouri for Best Original Screenplay. Yeah. So obviously it was a pretty good well, movie. It was probably a well-written screenplay. They yeah. didn't make any changes to it, obviously. But, uh, you know, because the other thing is that whole sinking scene, I mean, they really people really took to that. Well, two people are going to be household names now because of it. Daniel... Just because they, they felt like Daniel, it was a, a visual uh, representation of how uh, African-Americans feel Colin in this screwed up. 
Everybody point at Colin and say, you know, why Why are being, all the credits on TV right you now? You know, sinking down and being unheard. Can't you know even what see I mean? my face. So there's all this, all those uh, hidden messages in there or messages that relate. But, I mean, you guys just couldn't just connect with it just on a basic level. No. Well, that's the thing is, like I said, Daniel, I'm going to call him Kalua because I don't know how to pronounce his last Daniel name. Kalua. And Jordan Peele are going to become superstars because of this movie. Like, yeah, I think it was an original film. I think it should have won Best Picture. Oh, it was an original film. I think it... I, I think it was like the right message like you could watch a movie like about martin luther king or some movie that deals directly with social issues and cultural issues and african with african americans here or you could have a movie that says well we're going to do a horror film and we're going to incorporate some of those feelings that we feel now and i think that was just a better way to tell it i think it's more original so that's why i mean i'm sick and tired of seeing films of you know I'm just surprised because it was rated oh, R. It did so much money, and it didn't have a star director or a real star in the. Yeah, it did. That's a high concept film. That's, that's I know, but that it just surprised me because generally those movies have like a driving force behind it. Like there's, you know, I gotta see this because this actor's new, up and coming, or this director. I love everything the director's done, yeah, right. and they didn't have any of that behind it. You know, what happened was it's the same thing. It, they released it during the summer. They thought it had a good market for the for the horror film, and I think people were surprised. Well, you know what I think it is. Uh, it was it was word just, of, it was word of mouth. Yeah, you know, they, it came out, and it just it's one of those movies that did okay in its first weekend, and then it just kept doing the same thing every weekend. It just it was good, steady. Good reviews of the critics, but audiences yeah. that were able to connect with the characters uh, enjoyed it, and then also enjoyed the. The, the the sort of the themes and the messages behind the, sort of the general story. Well, didn't I, I kind of lost it because didn't it get it got to a point where once once it kind of started to unravel of what was going on. Yeah. Then it got into this killing thing, and that's where well, that, it kind of loses me because that's where you know when it comes to movies, I'm kind of like, all right, you know. Yeah. Oh, you mean him killing everyone? Well, that was right. just kind of a reverse of the classic horror film trope where the uh, African American guy always gets killed first. In yeah, yeah, film. yeah. And they, they always seem like characters that are just thrown in there for representation, but they really are not developed, and then they just get killed. Um, but this, they were just sort of turning it on its head. Now we're just going to kill. But isn't Night of the Living Dead the last the last guy to get? Well, yeah, it was in the vein. That's why Night of the Living Dead was considered a, a classic, and plus also maybe the, some of the social themes that were behind it, and that's kind of what this film uh, did in, in an interesting way. So I, I, w I would give it best picture. So we are going to. Uh, we're going to do our special, we're not going to say what it is, but we're going to do our special show next week. Yeah. Next you week. You've got to watch The Last Jedi so we can complain about it. Come I on. know. I still haven't seen The Force Awakens yet. i got to watch The Force Awakens first. You want to complain about The Last Jedi? I want to complain about it all day. Yeah. All no, day. we'll do a show about that. No no. Uh, no I thought you were no joking. Problem. I thought you were loving it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Wait, I'm doing a show. You someone to complain to, man. Can't say hi in front of the camera? Wave no. to the camera? Hi in front of the camera. I, <laughs> I honestly can't say because I, well, I uh, fell asleep. What so. was your guys' what, what, what did you want for best picture? I haven't seen anything else. Oh. Yeah, I'd have to. I'm going to watch three that billboards looks tomorrow. It's really good. Yeah. I watched the first well, one. you can borrow it. I'm going to let Don borrow it, and then when he's done, you can borrow it. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm getting it in the mail tomorrow. So. But um, we do got to wrap it up because i got to get it going. Um, so, yeah, we'll have our. Uh, our full episode next week. It's going to be a special edition. It's going to be fun. Don got to watch one of the movies I let him borrow. Did you watch Braveheart? No. Is um, is uh, the is movie brought back? back? No. <laughs> Bring almost, the movie back. I, I'm, I'm on the verge of buying it. I saw it for $5. What I is it again? Zodiac. Zodiac. I was, Zodiac. Gonna, Zodiac. Yes. I was going to buy it for $5. Back. It's not yours. Okay? Yeah. You're allowed to have it for like three weeks at a time. Bring it back. It's gone. Don wants to watch it. <laughs> Somebody's got it somewhere. It's and you watch Braveheart. I need to watch. You, want, you need to watch Braveheart. So we can we can have a show. Just I have to about convince Braveheart. my girlfriend. Come on, it's Braveheart night. Yep, Braveheart. <laughs> All right, She's so like, great. That's it. Alex <laughs> was our special guest today. I'm one of your hosts, Joey Powers. I'm Don Trettler. See, See you at, at the, the movies. movies.